Mr. Vice President, a major milestone in the Artemis program today. You came down here to the Kennedy Space Center on the 50th anniversary of the lunar landing to announce that the Orion capsule has been completed. When will it be ready to fly? Well, they tell me there will be a test flight um, later this year, maybe early next year. But I know every American is excited about the fact that under President Trump's leadership, we've renewed our commitment to lead in human space exploration once again. And before the next year is out, you'll see American astronauts going into space on American rockets from American soil, which is something we haven't seen since the shuttle program uh, was grounded the better part of 10 years ago. But, you know, this is a president who truly believes that what we're celebrating today, what happened 50 years ago uh, with the Apollo 11 landing on the moon, the first men on the moon, uh, all the accomplishments, that that not only should be an inspiration to our nation, but it should inspire this generation of Americans to renew our commitment to lead in space exploration. That's exactly what we're doing. And by certifying the Orion capsule today, uh, that it's ready to move back to Ohio and start to be prepared for flight is evidence of the fact that uh, we've renewed our commitment to lead in space with human space exploration once again. I know you and President Trump have been the driving force to push NASA and push the United States to get back to either the moon or Mars. The plan for Artemis is to go to the moon first and then right. use that as a jumping off point to get to Mars. But yesterday in the Oval Office, President Trump <laughs> did not seem entirely convinced that we should go to the moon first and not just go directly to Mars. Are you sure that President Trump is on board with this plan? <laughs> you bet, 100%. Okay. Uh, Space Policy Directive 1 that the president signed shortly after restarting the National Space Council really committed the United States to return to the moon and then go to Mars. Um, and, but what, so there's what the no American... chance that we're going to start <laughs> down this road and President Trump is going to say, no, 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 really, we're just going to go Look, straight to what, Mars. What the American people are used to is this is a president who always wants to go higher, farther, faster than anybody else has ever gone. He's anxious, I think, like every American is, uh, to see American astronauts on Mars. But what we understand is that uh, you know the trip to Mars will literally take the better part of a year and we will go there not for months but for much longer than we've ever survived in space so that by returning to the moon by following in the footsteps of the Apollo heroes that we remember here today on this 50th anniversary by returning to the moon we're going to develop the technologies the techniques literally the machinery to be able to then go to Mars and be there for a long and sustained period of time. One of those Apollo 11 heroes, Gene Kranz, the flight director who was in mission control when the Eagle landed on the moon, he told me that in order for Artemis to be a success, it needs two things. It needs leadership and unity. I know you believe that the Trump administration is providing that leadership, but the unity piece we have a very divided Congress and a very divided country. What are you going to do to sell this plan to the American people and to Democrats on Capitol Hill who need to fund this program? Well, I think it all begins with a vision. And President Trump laid out a bold vision that we were going to return to the moon within the next five years and then on to Mars. And, and made a pledge that the first woman and the next man on the moon will be an American astronaut. We're also making changes in our national security apparatus. We'll soon have a United States Space Force to make sure that we can defend our nation from the outer reaches of space. But again, it begins with a vision just like it did with President Kennedy. But do you think Congress this time will fund it? Well, it, th the same questions were asked in the 1960s. <laughs> History records that that was no easy lift as well. There were lots of skeptics at the time. And frankly, there was a lot of division in America in the 1960s. There was a war going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too. That's well, exactly right. I believe we have a special guest here. <laughs> we have Apollo 11 astronaut and moonwalker Buzz Aldrin. Buzz, it is such an honor for you to be here and joining us today. What is it like for you to be in this room? This is the historic suit-up room where you suited up before uh, going to right, launch yeah. that. It was just three of us. There's a lot more in here now, <laughs> but uh, uh, and we, we didn't have any lady astronauts there neither. But I understand we will now go into the moon, but, but underneath the vice president's leadership of the National Space Council, and the enthusiasm 
of our president. Yesterday, but there's, there's a lot of little fake news that comes out every so often, you know that. <laughs> but Buzz makes a great point. He said there, there was a war going on. There was a lot of division in the United States on that issue, many other issues. But when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Mike Collins went to the moon and what they accomplished, it, for that moment, it really unified the nation, unified the world. And we truly believe that as, as we renew our commitment to lead in human space exploration, and, and we'll reason. have the support in the Congress, that's the country, the and frankly around the world. we're making a big thing about the observances of, as mm -hmm. I call them, I call it the five decades of Apollo. It goes all the way from Apollo 1 mm -hmm. through the successful landing on up through Apollo 17. These are the five decades of Apollo. And now we're going to begin the decades of Artemis. Yesterday in the Oval Office, you said that you were a bit frustrated with the lack of, of progress of humanity right. into space. Are you less frustrated in 2019 than you were a few years ago after the shuttle Things retired? Things never go uh, the way that the dreamers would really like right at the beginning. President Kennedy gave us a destination and a time. Mm -hmm. And he felt sure that we would come up with a plan. And the plan that was initially there, a few were not satisfied with it. And so they changed the plan. And it made this success out of Apollo. And we now have prepared uh, a method of getting to the moon again and on to Mars. And I believe that we should always be ready for alternatives. In the space program, we call them backup procedures. Backup. <laughs> you should have a backup to your primary. And what we decided to do was to make the primary do the backup. The same thing, so that if you had to not do the primary, the backup was right there ready to come in and take over. Well, Buzz Aldrin, but, it is an absolute honor uh, to be with you today. Thank 50 you. years ago today, you were walking on the moon. Uh, thank you so much for all that you did for this country. And Mr. Vice President, congratulations on the announcement of a completed capsule. Well, thank you, Kristen. Thank you. You know, we, um, we really do well as a nation to pause and remember what Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and more than 400,000 Americans behind them at NASA and all across American industry accomplished. But, uh, but the American people ought to know that under President Trump's leadership, we once again have a president who's laid out a vision. Uh, we're going to work with members of Congress to inspire the nation once again. And America is leading in human space exploration. And it's the inspiration of those who've gone before, like Buzz Aldrin. I was drive just us a there. little kid, you know, <laughs> a teenager during World War II. And look at what opened up. Look at the marvelous opportunities, experiences that came my way. Just not automatic at all. They happened, and I was very fortunate. And I'm so very grateful for this nation to be able to provide those opportunities mm. to You've inspired all of us. generations, and you continue to do so. Buzz Aldrin, Mr. Vice President, thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you.